Greetings and salutations, my dear audience. This is Joe St. Egg Benedictus coming at you with another Bible review. Uh, and I uh, want to give a shout out to my pal, uh, Mike, and all to, vision, to the visionaries and mystics out there. Thank you for joining me. Let me lower my camera a little bit. It's going in and out. It's all getting all wonky. I got this new camera, so it's all fancy. It has like a push-pull feature, and it's hard to get all right. But uh, we're going to try this anyway. Anyhow, uh, just uh, want to thank you for uh, joining me uh, in this uh, beautiful summer of Bible reviews and other oddities. One of the oddities I would love to show you is this guy. Ready for this? Look at this. My wife picked me picked this up for me for Father's Day. Isn't that amazing? Look at that. It's a roll of tape. And this guy here sitting on the toilet can hold a pencil. All right, you got the little pencil holder in the back, little uh, post-it notes, and he's uh taking a pooper with the uh, paper clips. So how do you like that? Pretty neat, huh? Anyway, we'll put that guy aside. Thought you'd like that, get a kick out of that, and uh, you can find it on Amazon for, I don't know, 10 bucks or something. Today I'm bringing you the smallest apocrypha that I own. Now I'm not sure if this is the smallest apocrypha in the world, but for me, it's uh, one of the smallest or the smallest apocrypha I own. So let's go ahead and jump into the Bible. Pick this up in my used bookstore, and there it is. Look at that little thing. Holy Bible with apocrypha. I saw this on the shelf, and I thought, huh, a Bible with an apocrypha that's the size of a pocket Bible, to some extent. has that nice red edging on it. Uh, old school hardcover. So I'm assuming this is from maybe the, I don't know, 70s maybe or 80s but we'll take a look at it let's go ahead and measure it before we jump in just to give you a sense of how small this thing is it is uh, just to give you a sense here about four and a half inches by oh six and uh, a little over six and a half inches six and a half inches all right it's uh by one and a quarter inches so there you go and this is by American Bible Society. So let's jump in it and see what happens. First of all, I've got it for a buck. Can't beat that. First page, you have a map of the, uh, what is that? Oh, a map of, well, Israel would be right there. So this is a map of the Mesopotamia and the and Babylon, Babylonia. So it's a bit of an odd map to put on the inside. Usually they'd have a map of Israel or a map of Jerusalem or the temple, but putting Babylonia in the center of a map on the first page, I think is a bit of an oddity. So we'll look and see what other maps it has. Anyhow, this is the King James Version, as you can see. Usually I don't buy King James Versions, but again, not only is this Bible unique for me because it has the Apocrypha and it's so small, but it's also King James Version that has the Apocrypha. So let's jump in here and get into the uh, features. As you can see, it's a double column. The, Writing is very, very small. First book of Moses called Genesis. It's verse by verse, as you can see. The type is pretty small. Um, but again, for a pocket Bible, you'd expect it to be about this size. You wouldn't expect it to be any bigger. It does have the subject headings at the top here and just the book and chapter number. No verses at the top. Page numbers are at the bottom. No cross references. Very simple, as you would expect from this Bible. Okay. So let's get to the Apocrypha, which would be... Kind of back here, Zechariah. So this has, there it is. I mean, this, this is a good Bible for the size, I think. It's pretty with the, the red art gilding. It even comes up when you open it. It doesn't disappear. Sometimes you have Bibles with red gilding or gold, and then you open it, and the gilding disappears, and that's really frustrating, especially if you're spending money on a Bible that, you know, you want to look good. Um, the... Um, my uh, Cambridge premium Bible is like that. It has the gold gilding, and then when you open it, the gilding disappears. There's no art gilding. And that's just really frustrating for a Bible I spent more than a dollar on. So there's the start of the Apocrypha. starts with First Ezra's, and then uh, goes from there, the end of the Prophets. All right. There's Esther. First Maccabees. Um, the Apocrypha is really important for history. Uh, I know for... You know, Catholics, it's scripture, and that's fine. And uh, for the Catholic Bibles, it's placed within the, the the order of the canon itself. But for we Protestants, it's not necessarily scripture, or it's not scripture, but it is a great reference for history, and everyone should have a copy of the Apocrypha to know the New Testament world and the 
transition between the Old and New Testament. Some people call that the, the silent years, and I think that's really insulting because Jews were writing a lot of material. It may not be inspired scripture, but it's, it doesn't make it any less important. Like first Enoch, which is actually quoted in the letter of Jude and so many other writings like the Ascension of Moses that have informed how the new Testament world, uh, is not, it thinks about God and, and the Messiah. And so when Jesus, you know, uses that son of man title for himself, he's not just, getting it from one little, a couple verses from Daniel. He's using a, a symbol that was very much talked about in First Enoch during that time. So literature in this age is extremely important for the context of, of knowing the Jewish worldview and even many of Jesus's teachings as well as the teachings of the New Testament. So again, very basic Bible. Let's see what we get in the back. Probably just nothing. So I don't see anything here. Revelation and go to the last page. See where we end, and there's the end, literally the end, printed in England by Iyer and Spottiswood Limited, His Majesty's Printers, London, and no map. So the only map you get is an odd map, not of Jerusalem or the Holy Land, but of Persia, Babylon, and Jerusalem, way tucked off in here where you can barely see it. So I think other than, than that oddity, um, it is a very neat book, um, good for bringing to uh, church. If you have a need for the Apocrypha, it's good to keep by your bedside. If you do the Book of Common Prayer and are willing to get into Sirach and other readings that are in the 1928 Book of Common Prayer and, and other iterations of the BCP. But it's a pretty neat Bible, I think, and to me, the world's second smallest Apocrypha. Why do I say that? Because I'm sure there's an Apocrypha out there smaller than this.